In the name of God, before I start, I would like to thank the Organizing Committee of Material Science and Nanotechnology Conference for providing me the opportunity to have the presentation in this conference. My name is Nafise Bahirai. I'm the Associate Professor at Faculty of Medical Science at Tabiat Mudaris University in Iran. What I'm going to talk is about electroactive materials as encouraging tools for cardiac tissue engineering. Cardiovascular diseases like aorta disease, coronary artery disease, congenital heart disease, and so on, all are the leading causes of death worldwide. Among CVDs, myocardial infarction is the most life-threatening one. During MI, millions of cardiomyocytes and vascular structures are destroyed due to the ischemia and oculate that arises from oculated coronary arteries. As a consequence, fibroblasts are proliferating and uh, that is to maintain the heart's integrity and therefore the collagen-rich fibrosis replaces the dead myocardium. This non-functional uh, remodeling leads to alterations in heart wall thickness, ventricular dilation, and arrhythmia. Common preventive and preservative therapies such as drugs and surgeries cannot successfully regenerate and restore the mechanical and uh, electrical features of cardiac tissues. Therefore, it is necessary to move towards innovative treatments like cardiac cell therapy and cardiac tissue engineering. Construction of cardiac tissue relies on cardiogenic cells accompanied by natural or synthetic materials in the form of injectable biomaterials or patches. The examined materials could support matrices and improve cell attachment, proliferation, differentiation. They can also improve cell engraftment and uh, uh, boost the cell survival rate. Efficient cart function requires rhythmic atrial and ventricular contractions that depend on two special cardiac properties, a spontaneous excitation of pacemakers and signal transfer and action potential generation of cardiomyopathy. In MI, we see disordered cardiac electrical system, abnormal gene expression for regulation of ion channels, as well as alterations in calcium current and the expression and localization of connexin 43 are the result of cardiac remodeling. The accumulation of collagen and cross-linking of the ECM in fibrotic tissues causes stiffness of the heart walls, impairment in the mechanical and electrical uh, properties of cardiac chambers, and also dyssynchronized contractions which ultimately lead to arrhythmia. Now, let's move on to our uh, subject, which is the electroactive biomaterials. You know the heart is an electroactive tissue which is capable of electrical signal transmission. Wide ranges of electroconductive biomaterials have been used to preserve the electrical integrity of the heart. These biomaterials are mainly based on carbon-based materials, conductive polymers and metallic particles and the group that we call it others biomaterials all of which could improve cell interaction cell viability cell maturation and cell differentiation 
different types of carbon bond nanomaterial carbon based nanomaterials have been used for cardiac tissue engineering they are carbon nanotubes carbon nanofibers carbon nanohorns and the last one graphene family nanomaterials carbon nanotubes or cnts these materials provide a soft artificial ECM to facilitate cell adhesion and represent the more mature molecular and cellular electrophysiological phenotype for cardiomyocytes. CNTs provide a protective role for cardiomyocytes against pathological hypertrophy. They could act as free radical scavenger to protect cardiac cells from the damage made by free oxygen radicals. A major complication of CNTs is their poor dispersion in numerous solvents due to their chemically inert nature. CNTs are also hydrophobic which causes their reduced dispersion and rapid aggregation. They have also the potential to be cytotoxic depending on their concentration, shape and size. Carbon nanofibers is another group of carbon-based nanomaterials. It has been proved that these materials could improve protein adsorption such as vitronectin and laminin and therefore assisting the enhanced cell adhesion and proliferation. In our group, we made a novel electroactive cardiac patch based on carbon nanofiber and gelatin and we assess the angiogenic capability of the prepared scaffold. Here you can see the morphology of the prepared scaffold, randomly oriented nanofibers with a bit free morphology is obvious. You can also see uh, you can also see the morphology of Huex cultured on both type of scaffolds. Uh, you can see here the electroactive scaffolds are fully covered with cells. It shows that this scaffold could provide a desirable platform for Huex. Angiogenic capability of the samples was assessed after two and four weeks. The number of vessels that were grown on both scaffolds increased during the first two weeks after implantation. Four weeks post implantation on part C and D you can see that um, the Scaffolds containing CNF have more sporting vessels than the plain gelatin. Immunofluorescent staining of tissue sections with VEGF was also used to study the newly formed blood vessel. Based on the evaluation of the images, more capillary were detected in the CNF containing scaffolds after two and four weeks. Uh, here we also quantify the um, vessel density in CNF containing scaffold and uh, as you can see the number is significantly uh, increasing compared with gelatin after four weeks which is beneficial for tissue engineering. Graphene family nanomaterials is another carbon based nanomaterials which is which are the excellent nanomaterials due to their atomic structure and distribution of the electrons they got uh, excellent thermal conductivity electrical conductivities with a very good mechanical bioactivity and bio compatibility properties. These features make graphene a potential material for medical imaging, drug delivery, tissue engineering, and other biomedical applications. 
Geophones like graphene oxide particles could bridge the cells to decrease impedance between the cells and subsequently improve charge distribution and propagation of action potential. Cell adhesion is also increased via protein adsorption through the functional groups of GNF, G GFNs. Both graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide could be proangiogenic and this feature is dose dependent. GFNs could also induce cardiogenic differentiation. Although there are numerous studies that uh, confirm the promising characteristics of GFNs for cardiac tissue engineering, researchers should address the challenges for the cytotoxicity or genotoxicity of these nanomaterials. Biocompatibility of GFNs depend on the dosage, exposure time, number of layers, and chemistry, as well as shapes and lateral dimensions of these materials. More importantly, cell GFNs interaction need to be truly investigated in vivo. The, the mechanism of the clearance of GFNs and their lifetime in human body need to be precisely examined, which uh, can provide a platform for their safe clinical application. This is one of uh, our uh, um, study in our group. This is to investigate the physical, chemical, and biological properties of a novel combination of oxidized alginate, ECM, and amine RGO for cardiac tissue engineering. We uh, investigated different concentration of amine argyl. As can be seen in part A, all of the hydrogels were completely uniform and the color of the hydrogels was detected to be darker when higher concentration of amine argyl were incorporated into the hydrogels. In part B, you can see that after 96 hours, cell viability for the electroactive hydrogel was significantly uh, improve relative to that for other groups including TCP, tissue culture plate. Immunostaining using live and dead staining showed that almost most of the cells cultured within the electroactive hydrogel were stained green, indicating the viable cells. Cell aggregations were also noticeable in this sample. One of, uh, one of the study in our group was to prepare electrically active composite of collagen and graphene oxide. Uh, first we prepared collagen scaffolds and then they were uh, covalently coated with graphene oxide. Some scaffolds were also reduced by reduction agent to restore the high conductivity of graphene oxide. oxide. Here is the morphology of the collagen coated uh, scaffolds with different concentration of graphene oxide. We observed the um, improvement in cell viability and also looking at the e SCM images of the prepared scaffolds, all of them uh, contain the porous structure with uh, interconnected pores. In vivo angiogenesis was assessed again by recruiting the subcutaneously implanted scaffolds after two and four weeks. As you can see, after four weeks, both scaffolds remained in their determined morphology. However, some degree of uh, deformation was observed in the scaffolds with the, uh, without having electroactive uh, 
The newly formed blood vessels were also investigated by immunofluorescent staining with VGF. More capillary, here you can see more capillaries were observed in electroactive scaffolds confirming the enhanced vascularization in the scaffolds with reduced graphene oxide that is owing to the angiogenic characteristics of the RDL. In another study, we uh, assessed the uh, antibacterial activity of graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide uh, containing scaffolds. We observed that RGO coated scaffolds completely could inhibit the attachment of bacterial strains onto the surface, onto their surface compared to the collagen scaffolds, which you can see on the right uh, side of this slide. In another study in our group, we tried to benefit from the merits of alginate and we hypothesized that RGO incorporation within the structure of the hydrogel could improve the cell and improve the uh, cell viability of the human bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. Also, we uh, confirm that uh, RGO incorporation could provide a suitable platform for upregulation of the cardiomyocyte gene expression, even without electrical stimulation. Among conductive materials, conducting polymers are of considerable interest for cardiac tissue engineering applications. It has been proved that the uh, car uh, conducting polymers could improve capabilities for electroactive tissue regeneration. They could also regulate cellular activities such as adhesion, proliferation, migration, and differentiation uh, via modulating a cell signaling pathway. Conducting polymers are also redox active, so they can be used as reducing agent for scavenging free radicals in high oxidative tissues, especially after cardiac infunction. They could also improve protein adsorption, therefore uh, improving the cell adhesion. However, like other conducting materials, they have limitations. They have poor mechanical properties, processability, and biocompatibilities, and biodegradabilities. Conducting polymers have also short working time because of a decrease in their electrical properties. We also made, uh, and in another study, we also made an electroactive uh, polyurethane for cardiac tissue engineering. The purpose of this study was to fa fabricate a uh, novel conductive polyurethane containing aniline pentamer moieties and its blend with polycoprolactin. Our data showed that the electrical conductive substrates prepared in our lab are non-toxic and could support cell proliferation attachment combined with antioxidant properties. Gold-based nanomaterials are another group of electroactive materials which are ideal for cardiac tissue engineering, that is due to their high uh, biocompatibility, low cytotoxicity, ease of fabrication, high surface area, and relatively bioinert nature of these materials, as well as controllable size and shape fabrication. 
These nanomaterials could enhance cell proliferation and improve cardiogenic differentiation. They could also increase the expression of cardiac specific genes as well as improve intercellular electrical communication. Unlike the numerous beneficial properties of uh, gold nanomaterials, a major drawback of scaffolds derived from these materials is their low mechanical strength compared to the native human myocardial elastic modules. These materials are also poorly dispersed and they have cytotoxicity depending on their dose that's related to the rust generation. Degradability, cytotoxicity, and the effects of byproducts of their degradation on human cells should be precisely investigated for the clinical application of these materials. I have also included other types of biomaterials, which here you can see melanin, silicon nanofire, uh, nanowire, silver nanoparticles, selenium, and conductive bionic <coughs> melanins. That's a type of natural pigments usually found in mammalian skin with exceptional physical, chemical, biological, and electrical properties. They have high electrical conductivity and photoconductivity. Silicon nanowires also, uh, they, have, uh, investig they have shown to uh, have high electrical conductivity and controllable size. They could also be easily functionalized and biodegraded. Silver nanoparticles have also high electrical conductivities with the properties of antioxidant, non-inflammatory, and antibiofilm or antibacterial properties. Another semiconductor nanomaterials used for cardiac tissue engineering is selenium, which is a nutrient necessary for human health. Lack of selenium leads to severe cardiovascular disease such as cardiomyopathy. It has been shown that selenium nanoparticles have high electrical conductivity and good antioxidant activity, and they can, can be used as therapeutic agents with excellent cardioprotective effects. Conductive bionic liquids, they are also biodegradable and biocompatible. They have shown high water solubility with high ionic conductivity, low melting point, and electromechanical stability. Unlike Conventional insulting, insulating biomaterials, which limit the interaction of cardiac cells and lead to the prolonged action potential propagations, we have electrically conductive biomaterials, which are expected to improve electromechanical and topographical features of the scaffolds as well as uh, stimulating the proliferation and adhesion maturation of cardiac cells with cardiogenic differentiation of various uh, types of stem cells. More importantly, in vivo studies that involve conductive materials are still insufficient to ensure their biocompatibility, degradation rate, and potential immunogenicity. I hope that future study likely focus on discovering molecular mechanism in cellular responses and, and take into consideration the genotoxicity and cytotoxicity associated with electroactive. To make it short, based on the obtained results, conductive biomaterials with or without external electrical stimulation 
can improve the function of cardiac cells and in turn restore myocardial electromechanical integrity, cardiac repair, as well as regeneration. Finally, if you're interested to study the effects of electrolytic materials on cardiac cell functions and their proposed mechanisms of action, I can uh, introduce you our latest publication as you can see here in this slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, I can answer now. Thanks a lot.